One, thank you for coming. Um, as I mentioned, the, this is a forum to have an honest and open discussion about digital marketing. Um, we want to create um, more events like this, so we definitely encourage you to uh, to kind of follow it and, and stay up to date and, and maybe even just make suggestions on how we can improve and speakers you'd like to see and events you'd like to have. You know, we're, we're very open. If you want to be involved in the organization, we're more than happy to have you. Uh, and, and that being said, um, as we continue with the, the panel here, um, we're going to have some questions that we've prepared and talked about to kind of give a background on what they've done. Uh, we have three of the leading marketing, digital marketing experts in Barcelona uh, to join us today, which is, which is great. But at the same time, we want you guys to be able to ask your questions too, okay? So while they're talking, while we're going through this, please start thinking of things that you might want to ask them as it pertains to your life, your careers, your companies, your projects, uh, and hopefully we can, we can offer some insights that's personalized and, and customized to you. Um, okay, so without further ado, uh, I'd like to introduce our, our expert panel. First, we have Maria Fernandez. She's the, uh, the, co uh, the, the marketing manager and also now head of growth at Dexmatech. Is that right? Um, sitting next to her is Natalia, uh, Natalia Bandach. Natalia is the head of digital at Cantox, just down the street from here, right, in the Map Free Tower. And, uh, and next to her is Tony Jimeno, Tony Jimeno uh, Solans. And he's, uh, he's the co-founder and, and CMO at Talent Clue, another fast, fast rising, fast growing startup here in Barcelona. Uh, but before I butcher all your introductions, why don't you guys just take a moment and introduce yourselves. Uh, Maria, do you want to start? Um, well, hello everyone. My name is Maria. I'm from Madrid, but I've been living here in Barcelona since three years ago. Um, as Scott mentioned, I'm the marketing manager at Dexmo. What we do there is offering software for energy analysis, and people basically use our software for understanding how they consume the energy and save money on that. That's what it does. It's really and nerdy when you get into it because it's based and, and built by and for engineers. Um, but the, the essence is uh, SaaS software running on the cloud. Um, and the goal of the company, of course, is to scale. Uh, it's been uh, working and open since 10 years ago with ups and downs here, based by two guys here from here from Barcelona. And we are now on that moment of uh, making it grow. Before that, I've always worked in marketing for tech companies, basically. Um, before, I was doing some um, freelance consultancy for startups here in Barcelona, mostly um, phone apps. So if you guys, if there's any freelancers here, and if you have questions also about that, uh, I have experience also on that. Before that, I worked for Cantolox, and before that, <laughs> I worked for um, big corporates like Esri or Oracle, uh, big, big companies on, on tech business, and it's a completely different model than okay. startups, yeah, which is cool. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, Nat, please. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Nat. Um, well, I'm a head of digital at Cantox. I've been at Cantox uh, since two years, uh, more or less. Um, I'm originally from Poland. I came to Barcelona 10 years ago to set up a business and also to study here. Uh, I have eight years of experience in, in marketing in general, digital marketing. Before that, I was uh, leading a startup with a high growth and high traffic entertainment companies. Um, before that, I was in Grupo Intercom with uh, classifieds. Um, I'm not sure what you uh, what what would you like to know. How many of you know Cantox? Awesome! I love to see that. I love to see that. So for those of you who don't know Cantox, uh, we are doing uh, currency and risk management uh, solutions. Uh, so basically, we do software uh, for uh, companies that are having uh, risk currency uh, risk in their business models. So yeah, hello, Tony. Yeah, please. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Now. Hello, everyone. Like, I'll I'll make this a story, like uh, Scott mentioned before. So um, I finished my degree here in Barcelona because I'm from Lleida, like a city nearby, uh, one nearby. Um, and then, like, I did a master and I got like my internship doing marketing for a consultancy, like agency with software. It was an HR. And then, like. Um, 
like where I was doing marketing because I was an intern, they say like do whatever kind of thing. And I was like there like, yeah, what should I do? Then I started reading blogs in US and stuff. And I was reading about inbound marketing and but nobody was talking about that here. So then we created a Talent Clue, which is a software, a recruitment software. And what happened, like, we're, if you look at recruitment software in the internet, it was zero results. Nobody was looking for it. So I say, like, maybe we should try the strategy and to do inbound marketing. And the, sale, the CEO believed me. And we were, like, I think, like, the first company in Spain, like, to do inbound marketing by ourselves because everybody was doing it in an agency. And then, like, it started working because nobody was doing it. So, like, people in HR, which is our niche, was, like, super amazed. And we became like the first company to be a success case of HubSpot. And then like we keep growing. And last year, like uh, we, we've been growing a lot, like thanks to email marketing, we never did paid ads like we tried, but never worked. So now we are generating probably 1,500 leads. And I don't know, we have more than 40 ebooks. And we did like 30 webinars already. Uh, so like we've been doing this for a long time. and. This December, we launched our own methodology, which is called inbound recruiting, which is applying the, the loss and the knowledge of inbound marketing to recruiting. So now we're st we want to be like the hubspot for recruiting. So nice. that's pretty much it. Yeah, Tony, if you, if you don't already know Tony, he's definitely one of the evangelists of, uh, of inbound in Spain. I mean, he brought inbound to Spain. Uh, and, um, and, but the, the story behind Talent Club is really interesting because Ivan, uh, the, your co-founder, uh, also had other companies in this space, SANA Talent, where you got your start, and, and uh, really just a true startup story of, of launching and then trying to find your real value add, right, and, and, and spinning until they found Talent Clue and able to create a new market, a new space around inbound recruiting. Um, maybe we'll, we'll actually start, start there with you, uh, Tony. Tell us a, a little bit about, about your team and, and how you guys work. I mean, how big is it? Who's on the team? What are the roles? So like, uh, just like to make like the progression, like when we start, uh, we were two people, like one guy for the content and social media and the other one like optimizing SEO and like creating, creating eBooks. And then right now we are seven people, we're kind of like operating every day like six because I don't call myself now. Like, so our team is like one, well, Alberto, like I'm going to do Alberto, he's like doing all the social media and also like the outreach, we call it outreach manager because like to do press and stuff okay. that we haven't done till now, like now we're starting. Then we have uh, Carla, who is like our content manager. She does all the blog posts and also like the, the guides, like the, in the TOEFL level, which means like to get leads, like to get visit, visits and leads. Then we have Anna, which is, is not here. Uh, she is like the one who, whenever we have the lead, we create emails like to nurture them, we create workflows, we create uh, more guides and content more advanced, like in order to nurture them. Then we have Ellie, which is like the marketing manager and market, new marketing director right now. <laughs> And she is like uh, operating all the strategy and working also with the sales team because like uh, we predict an inbound sales as well and having a marketing connection. So and then we have two designers because like design is uh, really important as well because like we buy from our eyes. So we have two people for designing like CTAs, uh, eBooks, uh, all the presentations, everything. Nice. Yeah, I think that's critical. I think design is is kind of eating the world uh, in that regard. It's important to have it kind of on your team or within within someone in the company who can actually help make things look pretty. Um, Nat, tell us a little bit about your team and how you guys work. Well, at Cantox, the content is the king, definitely. So we have three people dedicated to the content. We have a Forex writer. Uh, who is specialized in you know in markets and currencies? We have a fintech writer who is specialized in uh, all the news and APIs, uh, blockchain, everything, all the buzz around fintech. And then we have also um, very much um, risk uh, oriented and software oriented writer, and he is uh, he has a banking background, and he's really really good at writing all the brochures and uh, different you know guides that we that we make and then we also push for uh, for the tofu and bofu right and then we have um, social media manager and PR and she's also uh, in charge of uh, of the content team 
And then in my lead generation team, I have one person who is actually dedicated to nurturing and to sales and marketing alignment. So she is in charge of making sure that the leads are qualified leads and that sales are actually taking care of them correctly. So we're really working very close to sales and mar of marketing and at Contox right now. And I also have a very uh, good and talented uh, intern, and she is... Uh, another link between Forex strategy and marketing. So um, I'm having this tiny agents of change, you know, that bring the knowledge, the hardcore finance knowledge into, uh, into the marketing team. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it sounds like you have some very niche professionals with niche skill sets. That's, uh, that must have been difficult to find. We'll touch on that a little bit later yeah. when it comes to hiring and building your team. But uh, I think that's really, um, really critical to have that liaison between marketing and sales so that you're nurturing them through the funnel and you're not losing anybody along the way. Uh, cool. Maria, tell me about your team. Um, well, it's the two of us. Uh, Nicole is over there, too. She's our content manager. She writes all the good pieces that you can read, um, everything uh, that, that it's she's awesome when she joined the company uh, in October. So um, it's been short uh, that we, uh, since we have her. And before of that, it was just me. Um, and um, it's key to, I, I wanted to share a, a very nice resource for people here. Um, the, one of the co-founders of HubSpot has a, a slide share presentation that is how to um, build and scale a content marketing team. And I really, really recommend you to follow it because it's like, okay, at the beginning, you are there just one person. Tony knows this also. And you do a little bit of everything of all the funnel of the leads. Um, and you're trying to generate and you're trying to convert and you're trying to align with sales and everything. And it's fine. And then you find a good person for content. And that part of the work is covered. And for example, with us now, Nicole, not, she just not writes. She also creates uh, the social media images. We do a little bit of everything. Um, she creates emails for the, um, the more, um, you know, the newest leads and stuff like that. She covers all that part of the funnel of attracting the attention. And that way I can focus more on, okay, what happened with the, with the leads after that? What kind of uh, communication do we have with sales? I do more analytics and I try to follow up with the management team and stuff like that. And then there are uh, ways to grow even farther and as, as Tony's team or Natalia's team uh, grow, but we are now just the two of us and, and scaling and, and trying, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it can be a lot, you know, yeah, a lot, a lot is. to manage. So, so you mentioned HubSpot. I mean, you mentioned some of the content they've produced. They kind of invented the, the inbound uh, uh, philosophy. Um, do you use HubSpot? Is that a tool that you use? What are some other uh, tools in addition to HubSpot that you use leverage in the... Um, well, as a Dexma, uh, for lead generation and follow-up and nurturing and everything, we have HubSpot. It's our main platform. But our page, our website was built with WordPress. And when I joined the company, it was terrible. It looked like a page from the 90s or something. And uh, we had to redesign it, and it was just me. So at that moment, I was like, OK, I'm not going to a full migration of the site and going to HubSpot. I know that this is, yeah, it's not how the ride by HubSpot will recommend it. I know, Tony. <laughs> I don't have it in HubSpot neither. So. Yeah, so at that moment, I was like, OK, we have to go for a full redesign. It's just me. I, I hired a freelancer by now to help me with the design and everything. Uh, so we have that on WordPress. Uh, which is good for some things, and it's bad on integrations and follow-up and stuff that you have then. And HubSpot is continuously saying you, oh, uh, migrate your site. And you're like, yeah, like if I have time for that. Or <laughs> so it's kind of, um, yeah. But mainly it's, it's just that too. And we also have a different CRM. Uh, sales use the HubSpot CRM for part of the of their work with the leads, but then they migrate to a different one, which is called Pipedrive. It's fairly cheap and very good for startups. Um, so if you're guys in that moment of considering it, it's fairly nice. Um, 
but we did the exact same thing. We, we yeah. started with, uh, with HubSpot CRM and we, we migrated to pipe drive just uh, about a month ago. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and do you use any tools for social media, anything to manage your channels? Uh, I think we use HubSpot mainly for everything, right? Canva. Ah, we, we use uh, Canva design. for images. Um, it's pretty cool, but we don't, use Hootsuite or anything anymore. Do you use Buffer or Hootsuite at all? No, 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 no. With HubSpot, you got social media mostly cover. I mean, yeah. And Nat, how's yeah. your teamwork? Any platforms, tools? Oh my God, I'm like an automation geek. So if I had to tell you all the like tools that I'm using, uh, we would stay here till like 11. But let's say the coolest ones. Obviously HubSpot, HubSpot is like incredible. We lose Hootsuite as well. Uh, we have an integration with Salesforce. So uh, I actually administrate both HubSpot and Salesforce. Then uh, we're going to start soon with Intercom for chat, which is, I know you guys are doing it already and it seems, it seems really cool. Uh, I think you have different chat on, on Dexma. Yeah, it's, it's called Drift. Drift, yeah. In case you want to try it. It's super so, free. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. yeah. We, we, went away, we went away from the free chat. So, <laughs> just real quick on, on that note, uh, the, those tools, Drift and Intercom, are uh, both um, in-app communication things. So when you go to a website and the little box pops up in the bottom right-hand corner and says, hey, can I help you? It's like someone's face. That's like Drift. That's Intercom. Intercom is probably more well-known. Uh, Drift is more free. Uh, <laughs> but uh, but there's, a, there's a handful of them that do the, those, those chat boxes. And that's becoming more and more prevalent in the marketing world on the landing pages to have a human or maybe even a chat bot make that first impression. Um, so you guys are using that with Intercom. Yeah, I think my, I think my favorite is Zapier because it, it helps you like integrate everything with everything without any code. So that would be like the absolute best one. And then wise pops for pop-ups. Um, then another one that I like a lot is called Import.io. How many of you know Import.io? Oh, you're saving tons of hours of your work. So it's, this one is basically going to turn any list in the table, and it's free. So if you are one of those guys that are trying to copy and paste the table from one side to another, stop doing that right now and just use uh, import I.O. because it's really cool. And then a lot of tools that I find for sales, uh, which are help us with, with prospecting. So one of it would be a similar tech, right? So if, you, if your product depends on the technology and you want to see what kind of technology, like which pages are using WooCommerce or which pages are using Shopify, then this tool is going to give you all the list of the pages with the revenue of the company and with emails. So it's like... I, I know many more, but I think I should leave a space to Roger. Well, Tony, I, I'm going to go ahead and venture a guess that you use HubSpot. Yeah, I'm not <laughs> and, 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 uh, the only. And the only platform you guys use, how else do you guys, what else do you guys use internally? Uh, we use Unbounce to create landing pages, because like the... Well, what was the name of it? Unbounce. Unbounce. Yeah, because like the landing pages, like future is not the best. And in HubSpot... And then, like, wh whatever is complement. It's like with intercom for in-app communication, then go to webinar and go to meeting, like, to do webinars. Uh, and then, like, obviously, like, there's little tools. Like, we have Hello Bar for little stuff. And pretty much it. We, had, we used to have Sumo Me, but now we're canceling it because Hubsot already has, like, this, its own stuff. And, yeah, they're, like... Yeah. Ah, Slack, obviously, but it's yeah. not the marketing. Communication, Slack uh, yeah, is no, a... No. Uh, Just like poor marketing, I think like we use mainly that. And Gifty, like to use GIFs. That's Gifty. <laughs> to use GIFs all the time. GIFs, yeah, yeah, yeah. Gifty, yeah, that's Gifty, a yeah. Yeah. definitely. So, yeah, uh, okay, well, cool. Let's, let's, Tony, let's stay with you. Let's talk, let's talk strategy. Do you, guys, do you guys have a defined, documented, written down content marketing strategy or, or digital marketing strategy? And, and, and yeah, let's just start with that. Do you actually define it? Like it's it's more like a le it's more like a legacy that we have from the beginning. Because like at, at the beginning you're you're yourself, as Maria said, and then like you keep growing, and then can, you kind of follow what's done and how you can improve it. So uh, obviously we have different strategies, but it's more like the internal knowledge we have. Because I I've been there for well since the beginning. Ellie has been there two years already. So like uh, it's more here's what we done. 
let's see how we can improve it. Like whenever uh, we hire people, it's like, okay, we are already at eight. So your job is to make it a 10. So. And, and actually, that was, that was my question is when you onboard a new person to your team, mm -hmm. do you give them any materials to review or is it mostly just done through person to person like onboarding? No, we have like a ramp up document, which is uh, first like what they have to do if they haven't done before is like the HubS well, inbound certification, obviously, and then the HubSpot certification. And then we have like different documents and well explaining like how it works and also how it works at Clue. But like obviously having like these, these many guides and these webinars and everything, uh, it's, uh, it's pretty like obvious what uh, is the line. But what is a strategy like I always recommend to people who start is like, um, there is like, you can have like four blog posts that can be a guide. This guide can be a webinar. This webinar can be an infographic. So don't stress yourself too much about this because imagine that you write a post, how to recruit in Facebook, how to recruit in Twitter, how to recruit in LinkedIn. Then you say, oh, I have a guide about how to recruit in social media. And then I'm going to do a webinar. And then I'm going to do an infographic. So it's like the same content is repurposing and you don't have to think that much. So. As like if you do a content strategy then to start, think about this because you always have to start with an ebook, like in order to convert leads. Never start content without having something to download because visits for visits are not worth. So have like 12 posts that are, there are already three books and then do a webinar because like people, you say, oh, people will discover this. No, people don't read everything. People, if it's different format, they will think it's something else and you know, and it's, I think the best tip I always give that one is, is like four posts, one ebook, one webinar, one infographic, and then you have a lot of content to go. Yeah, definitely. The, the idea of repurposing your content, recycling your content, reusing it, you know, making sure that you're getting the most value because you're investing in that content. You have to think about that. Like to make a, to make a, a guide like that will take someone on your team or multiple people on your team hours, maybe days, maybe a week or more to make that content. That's, that's, that's thousands and thousands a year. Yes. Good question. That's, it's exactly the same because uh, it's, it's the same content. And also, to start, if you don't know what, what to write about, I will say, like, if you have, like, a competitor, go to their site, look at the shares, like, their posts have. It's like, oh, if I'm finding, like, oh, this post has 1,000 shares and the rest are 100, you have to write this post. Then go to Google and find, like, the five best and do a mix. And if you write in Spanish, it's even easier. Because it's like, okay. I'm there, there's some good tools for that too. BuzzSumo, right, is, is one. Yeah. It'll, it'll show you the top 20 performing uh, Buzz Sumo. posts and headlines. BuzzSumo.com. Uh, and then there's a local company here in Barcelona. I'm going to give a, a, just a shout out to these guys because they, they create awesome work. Uh, a company called Compite with a K. Does anybody here know Compite? Pere Codina and his team, they do, uh, they have an amazing tool that tracks all your competitors for you from a marketing perspective and tells you which posts are performing the best, which ones are getting the most engagement and that sort of thing. So it, basically you're using your competitors to get ideas for your own content. But back to what you're saying is repurposing is like if you're, you know, if you're, if you're investing that much time especially to create evergreen content. Evergreen just means it's going to be relevant for six months or a year or more, right? That's the best kind of content to create because then you can, you know, after three months, you can repurpose it into a webinar. Now, are there any tools you use for making webinars? I just go to webinar and then we have a presentation and that's all. But like to back what you said, like the posts that get like the most visits every month is like the first one we write. And it's like always in the top five of like the most visited post blog posts. It's amazing. Yeah. And so. That's cool. And Nat, um, any, what, what, were, what were we talking about? <laughs> Your documented, <laughs> about strategy, documented right? content strategy. Do you guys have an actual physically documented strategy that you can share with somebody? Uh, we don't believe in that kind of documentation as much as uh, experiments and checking different types of hypotheses. So I guess um, in the fast-paced environments and startups, what you need to do is you need to always A-B test everything against each other. So in that sense, um, I have a very, very uh, you know, high-level documents for, for new hires, but I also prefer them to be fresh because that is actually how they're going to become more creative. If I show them already what has been done, maybe you know, they're going to be thinking about in the same frameworks that, that we have already set up. Uh, so at first, no, but yes, we have content inventory. We, ha we have obviously all the metrics uh, of all the campaigns and, and the performance. 
Okay, that's, that's actually a really good point, you know, because if you, if you show them what's been done, maybe you limit their creativity. You, you kind of stunt their, their, their spark of, uh, of new ideas. Oh, good point. Right um, well, yeah, yeah, we do have uh, some kind of uh, document or strategy document. It's called Content Plan. <laughs> Um, we didn't have that last year, uh, and we were working a little bit like, oh, let's talk about it. Oh, U.S. elections. Oh, they're talking about energy. Oh, they're to and it was a little bit stressful, especially for a content writer. It was like, uh, yeah, I can write on this way, but we need to be thinking more ahead. So we, what we did super easy was, okay, January, February, March, blah, 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 till December this year. And we said, okay, these are the huge topics, the things that everyone in our industry is talking about, like um, innovation, demand response, um, well, many nerdy things about energy. Um, and I don't know, renewables, stuff like that. And we put that on the calendar. And we the next step was like, okay, our goal this year is at least generate 500 leads per month, which is double of what we did last year. Uh, what kind and how much content do we need to get that goal uh, achieved? Um, and at the beginning, we had no clue <laughs> because we were not working with um, uh, established um, program like, okay, we do four posts, we do a white paper, we do this and this and that. Uh, so we have more or less realized that we need two webinars per month and one white paper to get to our leads. So we can do uh, a webinar and a white paper about the same topic, and then we can cover a second topic, sometimes coming from sales, because we do speak a lot with sales about, okay, what, what kind of questions are you getting from prospects? What is what people don't understand from our content, our solution, our software? And we create a lot of new content about that. For example, next this month, we are having a webinar about um, meters, that it's something that we don't sell directly to clients, but people never get in our industry how to use them, how to define a meter in a strategy. How, and it's the topic that we talk over and over because sales is getting quest questions about that. So, yeah, we have a plan for this year, and it's working so far. We are hitting the targets. That's good. Yeah. That's good. You said something at the very end that, that just resonated, too. You get, you're get getting ideas from sales. I think that's a really critical thing, and that's why Nat has such a close relationship with her sales team. There's people who actually bridge those two worlds, because sales are the ones talking to the prospects every day, right? They're on the front lines of the organization. They're hearing the problems. They're hearing the pain points. That's pure gold from a marketing standpoint. That's what you need to know about as a marketer to know what to create, because sales has those answers. But if, if you're not talking internally, you're wasting a lot of valuable information. Um, that, that's, that's good, too. And it's, it's always great to be creating content. But the other half of that is then getting that content into the right people, right, the right screens, the right eyeballs, getting, getting to the right people. How do you define your audience, find your audience, and then, and then reach your audience and share? Like, how do they know that there's a webinar next month? For us, it was also very simple, and it's still simple. Um, and it came from sales also. We have two different personas, the ones that could be our potential partners and the ones that are the end users, the people that have a factory or a hospital and want to save money. And we don't sell directly to them. We have a partner strategy. So it comes from real business. Like, okay, when I joined Dexma, I had no clue about the business and it was like, okay, you have to bring potential partners 80% and then 20% will be in customers so we can nurture channel and give them the leads and keep you know bringing uh, projects to the company but our main goal is the potential partner and it was just that it was building the persona based on talking with the tech team sales CEO that has been working in the company for 10 years and it I mean he has fight with everything already in the market so it's kind of okay and then we have an R&D department that do a lot of trend watch so if you have any one on your company looking for innovation things or whatever talk with them too because they are always forward on where you are and they can bring you new topics and new worries that these uh, personas ha potentially might have yeah. 
Now, what about you? I mean, how, how do you guys identify a, a target market, a, your buyer personas, and how do you reach them? Well, I like personas. Uh, this is a nice framework, uh, but I don't really believe in it recently, to be honest, uh, because I think that everyone is very different and what sells is the emotions. And you cannot put emotions into personas because emotions are very personalized. So what, where you can put emotions is in the way when you, in the way what you market to those people. And then who you market to, these are the segments. So if you run smart campaigns, you're not going to spend a lot of money. So you can actually test everything against each other. And that is the way you can find you know, the best fit for, for your marketing team. So of course, I'm not going to sell to, um, to marketing managers or to HR because we're selling to finance uh, CFOs, right? Uh, um, but I'm going to test, you know, the different, uh, different structures, different strategies, different types of content, see uh, how hot and how cold are those, are those leads and, uh, and how can we get from there. And obviously, uh, the higher the potential, the better. Yeah. And are you doing, are you doing um, paid promotion of your content? Like after you create it and publish it, are you paying to get it out there or is yeah. it all organic? You are? Yeah, yeah, we are. Okay, and you're boosting it through social media. How are some of the exactly. social channels? Yes, mostly social media. But um, again, you can test with any amount of money uh, in social media, in in Google, uh, however you want. You're gonna get some insights on how it's working, right? Um, you can you can personalize a great deal in social media, and you can get really good insights on on what can actually bring you more business. For, for Cantox, is there a platform that is performing better than others as far as social media? Mm. Uh, well, LinkedIn was our main platform, usually. It and was. Yeah, it was. <laughs> but now it's Facebook. Now it's Facebook. Okay. So CFOs are in Facebook for different reasons, right? Some of them are there for spy, to spy their children, uh, see the pictures and stuff like that. Uh, some of them are there because they are, they are just in the wave. Some of them are you know, creating their profiles because it's just a cool platform to be and everyone is there and, and you can be connected to everyone. But they are there and, and you need to know how to engage them and with what type of content because it's not the same content you want to push on, on Facebook. It's not the same content you want to push on on LinkedIn. Uh, what wasn't working for us is Twitter. Uh, Twitter never really worked. And did, you, did Twitter work for you guys? No. Not really. No. So. It does work like I mean, paid, a paid, paid campaigns, no. Mm -hmm. For us, no. Yeah. It's super expensive. Targets are really little, especially here in Spain. Yeah. We never did campaigns in, like, paid campaigns. Yeah. What we, what we do, like, for instance, social media, we find, like, the forms need to be shorter because if not, like, the conversion rate was, like, uh, like email, direct traffic, all right, but uh, social media, really short forms, even though we lose information. Uh, what, what's the minimum? I mean, what, what do you need at minimum as far as to be a valuable lead? Uh, well, uh, like, we are pretty uh, exigent because we know the content is uh, really good, so people, like, it's, just, it's a test. Like, uh, at the beginning... You try and it's like, oh, conversion rate of landing page is uh, right now for us, the, our goal is 40%, which is like really, really high. But that's what we set for us ourselves. But like social media was 15. So, okay, like, or 10. So we, for social media, since HubSpot like lets you uh, say, okay, for social media, you show this form. Then like now we try to uh, optimize it, like to make it short. And now it's name, uh, email, and company, pretty much. Uh, but then for the, for the rest of the people, it's more like uh, giving your, uh, your role, also how many people do you recruit. So we have at the beginning already like a kind of screening. Yes, as, well, I'm going to answer the, <laughs> the question. Like in the, the audience, yeah. yeah, with the audience, like, like three phases. First, buyer persona. Like first, we started with thinking the, uh, because like our product was really cheap at the beginning. So we're looking for um, uh, recruiters, rec recruiters. Like they were working day by day, and they were doing content for them. Which is like also really tough, but then like the our product went like uh, higher, like the price went like more expensive. So now we need to target like directors. So we need to change the content, and about how we uh, spread the content on our audience. Uh, see, like we have like two groups in the tofu level. So depending on what they download previously, 
we say, okay, this webinar is for the people who don't load this kind of stuff, and also like the nurturing and everything, and this webinar is for people who don't load this other stuff. And then when they don't load like Mofu stuff, we, we do the mix, people who don't load this and this, this and this, and this and this. And then like we send them relevant content. And then like to distribute like our webinars, uh, we do mostly social media, email, like emails work really good. Like you can be like really creative. Like we do like a campaign first sending like typical email campaign. Then we send an email like two days before, like super personal email. Like I'm writing myself like, hey, I'm reaching you because I think you cannot miss up that. And people reply to you, oh, thank you. Uh, and it's like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> well, like people fall into this. And then like our salespeople also like we, we taught them like to do videos and they record themselves saying, hey, I want to, re like, and they, like, I want to invite you to this webinar, we'll talk about this, 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 and, you know, and then they send the video to their prospects, inviting them to the webinar. Because if they attend, then they can, and you know, and, and also like they can create conversation. And um, people is amazed and it's really easy like to record yourself. And, <laughs> and I don't know, it's, uh, you can play with sales and everybody and also social media. And once you have, like, people love your webinar, like, more people will come. Because, as you said about, like, content, like, having a lot of content, if you do good content, like, people come. If you do bullshit content, people will say bye. No, that, that, the, I mean, the best content is the content that actually, you know, kind of shares itself, right? It, it, it attracts more quality leads because of the quality of that level. But you brought up video, which is on everyone's uh, kind of the tip of the tongue of, of all the trends and everyone, what they're saying about not even this year, even last year, it was, it was video is kind of the, the future. We're consuming more video every year, every month uh, on our phones, on online. It's becoming to the point where it's taking over the bandwidth of the entire internet. Now, um, you said sales is doing some video content. Are you guys making video content on the marketing team too? We, well, like actually today we post like a, a YouTube video, like we post a post, but then it was like um, also like a video explaining uh, some of the part of the content, like to reinforce that, and like so you can share the video, you can share the post, and now like later, well, later last week we decided, okay, I, now I want to be a YouTuber, I want to do short videos, <laughs> and I, I'm struggling with my tone because I'm too aggressive maybe, and but yeah, because people love videos, and and also like I. I recommend our recruiters, like, when you do a job offer, instead of, like, writing a bullshit job offer, like, explain yourself, like, the job offer in a video. Because mm -hmm. it's easier, it, like, they see you, they can feel your emotion, and they say, like, I would like to work with this guy. And it's easier, because it's talking, oh, yeah, like, I need this company, which, explain it with a video. And, and so, the same, sales, phone, like, if they send videos, and if you send personalized videos, like, their head is like, hey, Natalia, how are you? Like, I'm sending you this video. It's like, oh, I need to reply to this guy. And, like, and sales is starting with video. That. I have to reply, you know? So, <laughs> and now whoever is going to be first, like, it's going to take the market. So, like, because we, we see with webinars, when we don't, set, when we don't send the, the presentation or the video after, they say, hey, where's the video? No, you don't have the video anymore. Why? Uh, I want the video. It's like, no, you don't. <laughs> um, now we're trying this because we want them to attend. Like, yeah, the webinar. We want it to be live. So, yeah, and be, so, yeah. Uh, but yeah, video but, definitely. But back to the, okay, the example you just gave, if you, you published a blog post that had a portion of it recorded in video. What kind of video? Was it like a talking head video? Just somebody on your team talking? Yeah, well, uh, this one is, was me because I was like explaining, doing a little bit of a big talk and then I'm showing like the, uh, well, this one was about like the candidate experience when they apply to jobs because okay. like a lot of companies they have like super long forms. I'm saying like, hey, what do you do in your life that you have to fill a form for 40 minutes to apply to a job? It's like, you don't do nothing. Imagine going to Amazon and being to buy like some item, like 40 minutes. Yeah, I want the has no sense. So I was explaining that to them, like saying, hey, I had, has no sense. So I will show you how it's to do it with Talent Clue. And I was showing them like, hey, how easy is that? And, 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 and so you were mixing in screenshots as well? No, uh, of first the, was like my face. Then when I start like showing, like my face goes smaller and it shows the screen, and okay. then like my face go again. And who who on the on the team made the video? Town clue. Who it's, made the video? Is is not here, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Ellie helps me out a little bit with my tone and 
it was like because everything is improvisation. I go there, it's like, hey, uh, okay. And, do, you think, do you think you'll be doing more video content in this year? Yeah, yeah. We will, as I said, like now I want to do a lot of video content because it's easy and and I don't need to prepare. And my message is louder and clear. And than, you publish it on YouTube and then link it to your yeah. and then you have the embedded link on your on yeah. your blog. Yeah, okay, correct. Okay, good. Nat, what about you guys? You guys doing video content? Okay. Um. We did, we did video for the web, uh, which works really great. So if you go to contacts.com, we're going to see the, the video in the background. And we really love video. The thing is that the most important thing that you guys need to think of is, is who you're selling to and if these people like to consume this type of content, right? So in our case, we're not that much sure that but our like, audience is, uh, is used to video. Uh, so this is definitely something we're going to try, and it's definitely something that that uh, that I want to test. Um, but again, for Cantox, we're selling we're selling finance, we're selling we're selling software, we're selling to C level executives. So for us, a video is going to be a big investment because it needs to be really well done. It cannot be, you know, just um, some kind of animation that you pay like seventy nine bucks for and you just do it, you know, in in a in an evening. Uh, but yeah, I, I really think the video is going to take over the world <laughs> in that sense. And, uh, and we're probably going to start doing it more often. There's probably some really creative ways to integrate video into the marketing uh, mix for Cantox. Sure. Too, that. Yeah. Um, real, just real quick, Tony, to touch on it. What, what camera did you use for today's video? Uh, it was YouTube. What? I know, but what did you use like a DSLR uh, camera? Did you use someone's smartphone? It was just like, an iPhone. Yeah, the iPhone, and that's all. Yeah, uh, you don't so, need much. Yeah, so that that's another thing too. Is it, depending on your audience, depending on on the type of content you're creating, you can do it with the phones in your pocket. You can invest a little bit more and have you know like Sindra has here. We have three DSLRs. Sometimes there's like a GoPro hidden back here. <laughs> um, but, you know, obviously the, the more investment, the better quality video. You can do different angular shots, makes it more fun to watch, the quick, the quick uh, kind of edits and stuff like that. But, um, but it can be just as simple as doing a 30 second, you know, one minute clip with your, with your phone. And what about you, Maria? Are you guys doing video at Texma? Um, well, we reuse a lot the content and the videos we record from webinars. Um, and to be honest, uh, last month was the first time I ever edited a video in my life. <laughs> Uh, we did a video with Dexma women uh, asking the, her because we have so many awesome ladies on the team and they are engineers and it's not so easy to find engineers working in tech companies and with tech backgrounds and etc. And we wanted to do something for Women's Day and we did something like same with the smartphone and recording it and editing it like at, at ha in house. Uh, which looks, um, well. What, what software did you use to edit? Um, to be honest, I don't even remember the, the name because we were on a rush and I was like, you know, Googling and I was like, okay, something something super cheap and super simple and, and we paid 50 euro for that and uh, it's like a Canva for videos. You have stupid resources to add and music that you can use and it's like, okay, this is good to go. Um, uh, there's thousands of them, yeah, so you can, lots of them. yeah, yeah. But again, you have the whole spectrum. You can go right up to like yeah. you know, Final Cut and, and Adobe Premiere and stuff like that. Of course, we love. Uh, sorry, there's a question there. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> no, everyone loves video, so and and we think that we can create very good videos because we have very passionate and uh, inspiring people on the team, and they love doing videos. But you never find somehow the, the time because we are just two and considering having someone a uh, third party or a freelance just for videos is expensive for us right now so it's we will try in-house things in the future but we'll see yeah, yeah. but I, I think I think the message with with video is clear from all three of you is that it's like they may, might not have the abilities yet but they're going to experiment you know they're going to try they're going to test right and that's the that's the big key here